Is it time for AMD to finally lose the mid-range priced performance crown? Well, to find out, make sure you watch this whole video to understand the context of what I'm trying to say and not just look at the video title. We decided that we wanted to cover the 13600K only in this video and the reason why is because I feel like the 13600K is the most interesting CPU in this new lineup from Intel. Let's do a thing. We don't know what sounds Raptors make, do we? <laughs> nice voice, Claire. <laughs> we also decided to focus on gaming performance only for this video with a few different GPUs that we have here on hand. And the reason why is I understand that people want to see how many frames a new CPU and GPU can render at 720p on the lower settings, but that is not realistic in almost all use cases. Yes, it can show you how far something is, but it's not something you should actually care about if you're gaming. We wanted to show you the performance in benchmarks you can actually run yourself. That makes sense. Now, I've got no idea about availability at this point, and given this is pre-launch, I think the 13600K is gonna be pretty easy to get your hands on, and we've seen this with most of Intel's chips over the last little while, so hopefully, it should be easy. The main thing I was interested in though was to see what would happen if we paired this new 13600K with three powerful, that's that's four, three powerful GPU options, the RTX 4090, the Radeon 6900 XT, and the RTX 3090 Ti. Unfortunately, we don't have a 6950 XT, and I wanted to see if there's any performance left on the table with the high-end stuff, and I was also interested in some more affordable GPUs to see what the performance would look like in the mid-range. We also tested with the 3060 Ti and the Radeon 6600 XT, but let's get the biggest thing out of the way, the price for the 13600K. The price of the Intel Core i5 13600K comes in at around about 329 US dollars or around 569 Aussie dollars at the time of filming this video. As far as our test configuration, we're using the results from all of the testing that we did with the Ryzen 5 7600X review. We actually don't have a 7600X anymore. We had to send it on to someone else. We used our slower memory that we've got here as well because we don't have 6000 mega transfer memory, but as you're about to see, it doesn't really matter too much. We went with Windows 11 Enterprise 21H1 for all this testing. We're avoiding 22H2 for now because of all the issues it's having with GPU scheduling. For the motherboard, we ended up going with a newer Z790 board. We debated on using the same board as the GPU test bench, but I decided that we'd go with the Z790 Aorus Master instead. All the CPUs that you're seeing that we tested here, we didn't overclock the chips. It's purely out of the box performance. I also decided not to include the 13900K results in this video. We're actually working on a separate video that should come out in the near future with the 13900K, just not like a double video launch like we usually do. Let's start off with the performance that everybody wants to know about. Cinebench performance. We tested with Cinebench R23 only. We've got some historical data with R23 that we've collected from using heaps of different CPUs over the amount of time we So let's see how the 13600K stacks up. From our multi-threaded testing in Cinebench R23, it's immediately clear that the 13600K is an absolute beast. This is mainly to do with the addition of more e-cores. In total, the 13600K has eight e-cores, which is up from the four e-cores of the 12600K. In multi-threaded workloads, it smashes the 12600K and the 7600X by a lot. In single-threaded performance, this is where the 13600K really comes into its own. It decimates almost everything. It's interesting to note that the 12600K and the 7600X are actually quite close in performance. The 13600K is the fastest of this batch of CPUs. This is a truly impressive result. It looks like Intel has taken the crown again in single core performance. Alrighty, the 13600K is impressive for multi-threaded workloads and for single core workloads, but what about what this CPU is actually designed for? Gaming, right? That's why you're all here. 
Resizable bar and smart access memory was enabled for all the test benches that we use. We also test with realistic resolutions that people will actually play games at. I also wanted to mention that all of the testing, well, most of the testing before the 13600K was done pre-4090 launch and we included some additional 4090 results compared to our 12900K test bench for a bit of an indication of the expected performance here with the 13600K. With all that said, you know what time it is, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Let's see what happened. With the 3090 Ti, the 13600K leads. However, with the other three GPUs, it's a bit of a mixed bag. On average, the 13600K does come out on top though. With the 4090 compared to the 12900K GPU test bench, you can see that it falls behind by about 10 frames per second, but that's not always the case here. At 1440p, we are seeing it become a lot more GPU bound and we start to see most of the performance metrics even out except for the 13600K and the 6900 XT. It's about 10 frames faster than the 7600X. Comparing the 4090 with our GPU test bench, we're seeing that with the 13600K, we're seeing significantly more performance with this new CPU. At 4K, we hit that hard GPU ceiling and the results across the board start to even out with the 13600K managing to squeeze a couple extra frames out across the board. With the 4090 compared to the test bench, the performance is within a margin of error at 4K. All right, time for Unigen Superposition. For the Superposition test, we performed our regular tests. We do three tests in total, 4K optimized, custom 1440p preset with depth of field and motion blur turned off and 1080p extreme. Immediately, we can see that the same results are being echoed here with superposition at 1080p extreme. It's GPU bound with this benchmark and we're hitting that hard ceiling. With the 4090 though, we're also seeing the same results here being echoed at 1080p extreme. So nothing too exciting to mention. At 1440p, we're starting to see that the 13600K and the 7600X with the 3090Ti trade blows. However, with the 6900XT, the 7600X is faster. With the 4090 compared to the test bench with the 12900K, the 13600K, we're seeing a lot more performance here, like a lot. At 4K, we're hitting that hard GPU ceiling again, and with the 13600K, it's performing as expected. With the 4090 though, we see the 13600K manages to squeeze out an extra frame on top of the other results here. It's always one frame with this CPU. Next up is Basemark GPU. Basemark gives us a great indication of Vulkan performance in Windows and Linux. We're gonna be covering Linux at a later date in another video. The great thing with Basemark though is it's really good at exposing weaknesses with both CPUs and GPUs. Let's see what happened. At 1080p with the 13600K, it tops out all the GPU performance metrics except for the 6600 XT. The main thing with these results is that with these FPS numbers, they're actually quite high and because they're high for all of these, the percentages are actually smaller than what you think they are between all the CPUs. With the 6900 XT and actually most AMD GPUs in base mark, it shows clear weaknesses with both CPUs and GPUs. So this is just how it is. With the 4090 and the 13600K, we're seeing the strongest result by a single frame. So, you know. It's just how it is. At 1440p, we become super GPU bound and or it's almost dead even across the board. However, with the 13600K, it manages to squeeze out an extra frame with both Nvidia cards. With the 4090 and the 13600K, we're seeing the strongest result again by a single frame. No surprises. Lastly, at 4K, we're seeing more of the same here being GPU bound. And again, I wanted to mention that we do it this way because these are real resolutions that actual human beings will play games at, right? So that's why it is that way. With the 4090 and the 13600K, we're again seeing the highest frame rate here. All right, next up is Cyberpunk 2077. We do this one a little bit differently because FSR is supported on both Nvidia and AMD GPUs. I wanted to see what the story was if we tested at high settings with FSR set to quality mode. Let's see how the cookie crumbles. At 1080p, we're seeing the 13600K absolutely decimate the entire field at 1080p with the 3090Ti. And we're also seeing this again reflected with the 6900 XT. The difference being here that 
We usually see better performance with AMD GPUs for this test, but you know, this CPU is faster, so we didn't see that. With the 4090 and the 13600K, we're seeing the exact same result here being 222 FPS at 1080p. At 1440p with the 3090 Ti and the 13600K, we're still out on top because we are now more GPU bound. But flipping to the 4090, we see that it completely decimates our 12900K GPU test bench at 1440p. Lastly at 4K, we're GPU bound and the 3600K and the 3090 Ti smash the rest of the field by a fairly big margin. And with the 4090 at 4K, pretty interesting results. For the last batch of gaming-based benchmarks, we've got Horizon Zero Dawn. This is a pretty popular benchmark at the moment, and like Basemark, it can expose quite a few weaknesses. Let's see what's up, dog. At 1080p in Horizon Zero Dawn, the 13600K and 3090 have the strongest result overall, but with the 7600X and 6900 XT comes out on top. Now, here's where this gets interesting though. Compared to our 12900K test bench, the 13600K system smashes the 12900K system. Like, phew. I don't even have a sound effect for that. It just does it. Moving on to 1440p, we're seeing more of the same as the 3090 Ti and the 6900 XT. They're just so close for all of the CPUs, except for the 13600K blasting ahead of all of these benchmarks, except in one configuration. And you can see which one it is. With the 4090, the 13600K blasts ahead by a huge margin. I actually went back and tested this to make sure that these results were correct, and I kept getting this exact result consistently. Lastly, at 4K, we hit the hard GPU ceiling, and almost everything across the board is equal with the 13600K. It picked up a few extra frames, though. However, with the 4090, the 13600K loses a bit of performance here, which was a bit unexpected, considering how good the 13600K has performed in this benchmark at this resolution a lot of the other times at the other tests. Anyway. As far as power consumption goes in our one hour stress test in IDA 64, at idle we saw the CPU package power draw around three watts over that one hour period with an idle temperature of 32 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office on our open air test bench with a 360 mil liquid cooler. At full tilt though, the 13600K maxed out at around 122 watts with an average temperature of around about 70 degrees in our open air testing environment with our 360 mil liquid cooler in our 18 degree climate controlled office. Hope all that made sense. We can draw a few conclusions for the Intel Core i5-13600K. For a 14 core CPU, it's impressive. However, like Older Lake, Raptor Lake uses the big little architecture. So those 14 cores are actually six performance cores and eight efficient cores. The comparison here is a tough one because although it's in the same class as other six core CPUs, it's in a league of its own if you start to consider that the E cores handle all of the operating system's background tasks with ThreadDirector. And I said this with our older Lake content as well, that I was impressed with Intel's return to form, and to be honest, Raptor Lake continues to impress. The performance uplift is nothing to scoff at, and considering that at almost all the gaming benchmarks, the 13600K beat even the 12900K with the 4090, these results are super impressive with the CPU. On the flip side of all of that is the platform itself. The Z790 boards that I've seen are stupidly expensive and I would even go as far as saying that you can probably avoid Z790 if you really wanted to because if you can scoop up a decent Z690 board or a B660 board, the 13600K will not disappoint. It's a little ripper of a CPU. So my advice would be like, if you're looking at buying this, while there's still stock of those older boards, scoop it up while you can, because these new boards are a little bit on the pricey side. Now, I know there's gonna be people that are gonna comment the usual garbage, oh, LGA 1700 and Z790 is a dead platform. No one said that about AM4 when Ryzen 5000 launched. Remember people, most people don't upgrade every single generation. Most people upgrade maybe 
once every three to four years. I've got some friends who are still on fourth gen that don't want to upgrade yet. Heck, I don't even upgrade my own systems that much either. People will always complain about that kind of stuff. And those are the people that you're seeing in the comments that are not actually buying anything anyway. They just love to complain for the sake of complaining. And here's what I'll say to those people. Shut up and let people like things. The 13600K is an impressive CPU. If you're looking for an absolute banger of a CPU for gaming, the 13600K is definitely one to look at. Although if I do have to make one complaint, it's about the price. It does seem a little bit high for what is essentially a six core CPU. And I know Intel will argue that it's a 14 core CPU, but at its heart, it's a six core chip. Changed my mind. Let us know what you think about the 13600K below. And if you like this video, subscribe, you know, do the thing. Yep. You know how it is. I'm actually a little bit sick at the moment, so I'm sounding a little bit nasal, but if you like this video, like I said, do the thing. Once again, I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek, and wow, I can't believe I got through all of that. I am not feeling good. <laughs> it's not COVID. <laughs> it's just life. Thanks for watching.